right, y'all. Welcome back to Janie's Crazy Life. I'm going to be showing you guys how I dip beads. Um, someone has asked me about a my drying rack I use. So this video will also be talking about my drying rack. Because um, I want to post that on my page um, that I started for the paper beads. So that's what this video is going to be about. Me um, dipping my beads and um, talking about my rack. So... All right. All right, this is my rack. My drying rack for my beads. Okay. It's made out of two inch PVC, I believe. These have got to be, I can't take it apart anymore. I've had it so long and stuff has dripped down in the crevices. I can't. But what you need is a, a long piece of a two inch PVC. You need two L brackets. Okay, and I use six T joints. All right, on three on each side. So I cut this, the sides. You do whatever height you want it, and you do the top. You cut it however wide you want it. Um. So I'm gonna say that's about. I'm gonna say the top is about 15 inches. Maybe the sides are about. 20 ish inches long and then you need to cut four little pieces to just connect your l your t joints to each other back here so you got a t joint on the bottom of the long side and then you have little pieces here that connect these t joints to these <clears throat> and then what you do is I drilled holes in here. My intent was to try to try to drill a hole straight through to the other side, but my holes didn't line up because if I'd gone straight through the other side, I could have put um, skewers in there or chopsticks in there or something in there to hang my beads on. So what I had to do because my holes were not perfect straight through was I took wire and ran it through the front hole and the back hole then brought it up to the center and twisted it like a like a bread tie. But what's nice about this is that they can be moved. Like if I don't want beads touching, I can move them. But you get this at Walmart. It's really cheap. It's galvanized wire. Um, you know, like the thickness of a of a of a wire coat hanger. If you had old wire coat hangers, you could cut them up and do the same thing. And you wouldn't have to buy nothing. Now over here, I usually hang a popsicle stick on with a binder clip on it so I can stir my thing and I keep a pair of um, nail clippers on the back so that when you're dipping a bead and the bead has a, a little tab sticking out you can um, uh, cut it off and continue to to uh, so sometimes when you dip when I dip beads sometimes the very end will roll away and I can um, clip it off but that's my drying rack. That's my drying rack. So. And then I just put paper underneath it. Newspaper. I'm going to eventually, I think I'm going to start putting a, I'm going to look for a plastic tray or something that I can set right up underneath here. Or maybe take out uh, one of these or something. So that I can just let it drip and I can catch my uh, waste and pour it back in my container. But this is just about the, 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 the um, drying rack, how I made it. So again, you need a piece of PVC, two L brackets, and six T joints. That's what you need. Okay, I'm going to continue this video on for my YouTube and... Uh, which is Janie's Crazy Life, if anybody wants to check it out. Um, I'm going to continue the, the video so I can show how I dip my beads. Okay, now for how I dip my beads. I basically take the bead. Um, why, why I have um, front and back of this rack is that Usually, when I dip in just PC Petrifier, the beads hang only in the front. Okay? 
um, the moment they go to the back of the rack is when I know I'm done dipping them and they're the, on their last glazing. So basically I dip my beads in my glaze because these have been all been dipped in PC Petrifier a couple times. So these beads are ready for, uh, these beads are ready to be di dipped in glaze once, twice, however many times as I want to. So I let it dip, I let it drip a little bit. Because this part, I have to pay attention to the dipping. When I dip in PC Petrifier, I can just leave it in PC Petrifier and let it go. But this is what I have to do with these is, if you'll notice, right? Focus. Right there, there are bubbles. Right there, there are bubbles. So what I do is take a dry piece of, of newspaper and I pop those bubbles. Because if you don't pop those bubbles, when this sucker dries, when they dry, you will have a hard bubble on the bead. But I let them sit here and drip. Now, like I said, if I was just giving it one coat of glaze, after I could pop the bubbles, I would take this strand of beads and I would remove it from the front and go hang it in the back. And that way I would know that these beads are done. And after they're all done dry, they get put on one of these metal shower curtain her cooks. And after I do that, I take them down here and I hang them in my dry box which is basically a cabinet I turned into a dry box with a dehydrator underneath them. And I let them sit in here for, um, I only cook them for a few hours um, or evening or whatever. Now you can do the same thing with a, a regular dehydrator. Here's a regular dehydrator tray. You would just lay them around, once they weren't wet, you would just lay them around the dehydrator tray like this. You know, you, so you would just lay several roll, several one, not letting them touch, on your dehydrator tray and let them dry on the dehydrator. But I would watch this close because I have, over the years, I have actually melted the tray a little bit for leaving it way too long. So de never leave that unattended. I don't even leave the dryer box unattended. So basically I will just now dip these beads. And sometimes I'll dehydrate in between layers. You know, like if I want to make sure a bead is really getting dry, I will dehydrate in between my dippings. I'll let them get to where I can touch them. And then I will hang them on those things and I will dry in between because I live in Florida. We got humidity. I don't want my beads to stink or ever smell bad because of the fact that, uh, they, uh, stayed wet. I have never had a mildew problem in years, but I dip in PC petrifier a few times first, depending on the bead. And I dip in a combination of Verithame and PC Petrifier as my glazing process. So I keep them in big containers. So this is my glaze right here that's open. And that's my PC Petrifier. So I just, because that's, people don't realize that this stuff sucks up moisture. I mean, this paper sucks up this liquid. So, I mean, some people will stop at the PC Petrifier. And if you want to stop it, focus. You want to stop at PC Petrifier? It's still a shiny bead. Some people really glaze them so much that you can't even feel the texture of the bead. But I, I like to feel the focus. I like to feel those edges of the bead. I mean, it's paper beads. That's the whole purpose of the being paper beads. But that right there is how I, how I glaze my beads and how I hang them and how I dry them. Um, like I said, when I put them in this box, this what this is, is this is an old kitchen cabinet from Ikea that I took the sink off of. So it's really big. It's quite wide. 
I lined it with um, Reflectix just just to reflect the heat off the wood and then I um, hung Let's see if I can do this then I put hooks at the top on another little piece of board and then I hung them over now the reason why I have such a massive dry box and I got the idea from woodworkers is because I also do paper mache so when I when I dry my paper mache I put it on a rack so I you know could I could I done all this without ever having the dry box and just use the trays from a dehydrator? Yes, I did this for a, year, a couple years. Just used a dehydrator. Um, cause you can pick those up at the, uh, you can pick these dehydrators up at the, um, at thrift stores for less than 10 bucks. I mean, I think you can buy them new sometimes for 20 ish. So, I mean, I use dehydrators. For the longest time before I did the box. So don't go out and tell your husband or whoever that you have to go build a box because you saw it on my YouTube channel. Um, I needed this for my paper mache. So when I did it for my paper mache, I just incorporated my, incorporated my beads with it. You can do it easily with this. Um, some people have dried them in a in an oven. Or an old toaster oven on very low. I, I won't do that because I'm afraid I'll burn them and cause a fire. Um, definitely don't leave um, any kind of drying mechanism. Dehydrate anything unattended. I usually will dry when I'm working out here in the evening anyways for a while. Um, because I don't want to take a chance on having a fire or something. And I definitely would mark your dehydrator no food on it. Because this is a chemical on the beads, no matter what you're using. I mean, if you're using uh, nail polish, or if you're using triple thick, or diamond glaze, you could dehydrate. Once it's not sticky and tacky, um, you probably could hydrate them. I don't know if the heat with those other products, I don't know if the heat would um, um, cause the beads to be tacky. Um, I would not dehydrate them with Mod Podge because I know in Florida, Mod Podge gets sticky after a while. And I don't use Mod Podge on much of anything because I do live in Florida and I have found, like when I had my beads in a shed storage unit thing on the property and uh, they got the heat got to them, I did find that they got tacky. So I don't use Mod Podge for anything in Florida. I basically use... Um, PC Petrifier. Focus. PC Petrifier Wood Hardener. And Verithane. And it's Verithane, not Verithane. It's V-A-R-T-H-A-M-E. And I think you can get the Verithane at uh, um, Home Depot. Um, it's, it's expensive per gallon. I think it's close to 70 or 80 bucks a gallon. Um... I haven't bought it in a while, um, but I want to say I spent like $69 on it last time I bought it. Um, and I mix it half and half with PC Petrifier. And it is still, it's still thicker than the PC Petrifier. I mean, it's still thicker. I'll show you. So you can see that on that beads. So it's, still, it's thick. I, I can't tell you the ratio to what I do. I think it's um, two parts verithane to uh, one part um, PC Petrifier. Kind of swish them around in there when I do this. And then, like I said, I, I bring them out. See, it's, it's still thick. I can use straight verithane and it'll be a thicker glaze on the beads. But I have found that um, the beads do just as nice with one coat. I mean, with, with the mix, not with one. Well, they do do just as nice with one coat. But I found the beads do just as nice with the watered-down Verithane with the PC Petrifier in it as they do um, without the uh, uh, PC Petrifier mixture. So, um, I don't see much difference between straight Verithane or Verithane mixed with PC Petrifier. That's what I was trying to say. Um, 
Yes, maybe a little thicker coat without the PC Petrifier, but I find that the bubbling that I'm having to poke right here is worse with just the Verithane. So that's one of the reasons why I do it. Secondly, I make so many beads that um, it's very expensive. If I don't mix it, blend it, uh, you know, uh, if I don't mix it a little bit, it's very expensive. Um, I soak the beads really good in the uh, PC Petrifier, the first coat. I do two to three coats of PC Petrifier. Could I do only one? Probably. Um, I have done a water test in the past where I soaked the beads in only PC Petrifier. And they... And left it uh, in a little jar for several days. One bead. And the bead came out fine. In fact, I believe this is the bead. Right here. Focus. Focus. That's the bead. I soaked it for about a week in water and it's still a bead. So, um, I keep it on a piece of fishing line. Just... Up here, just oh, I just dropped it, but um, I just leave it up there. But yeah, I soaked the beads, so I know that the PC Petrifier. I mean, think about it honestly, do you have to really dip the the PC? Do you have to really dip in PC for Petrifier more than once? Um, I don't know if you really have to. I've never read, I mean, I've read the back of the container. Um, because think about it, it's a, it's a, it's a wood hardener. The moment you hit it with, with water, I mean, one moment you put your beads in, your paper beads in that, they get hardy. I mean, they get that protective coating on them. And I always wonder if it's really making a difference, a second dip, because you've already got that wood hardener on it. The only difference is... I dip the beads in one way, usually the first time, and then flip them and dip them the other way. And I use 10-pound fishing line, so it's really thin fishing line, so that I can get as much PC Petrifier down in the bead as possible to help coat the inside of the bead. So yes, I do soak them twice at least in PC Petrifier, hoping to get the inside of the bead too. Because it's fine to... It's fine if you are using nail polish or triple thick and or diamond glaze and you're brushing it on your bead, but you're only attacking the outside of the bead. You're not attacking the inside of the bead. So, um, I worry about the inside of the bead. You know, if the inside of the bead gets wet and there isn't possibly something in there, then is the inside going to come apart before the outside? If somebody accidentally got them wet? I don't know. So... But yeah, that's how I do it. This is how I've been doing it for a year, a couple years now, at least three, four years now. And I have had no problem with my beads at all. No problem. See, because if you don't pop those bubbles that you see when you're doing this stuff, I mean, these are hard beads. And they've only been a PC petrifier. So they are hard beads. It's not a good. You know, so they're already hard. I, I couldn't squeeze a bead if I wanted to. Um, but if you don't pop those bubbles that I just popped with the paper, um, they will dry a hard little bubble. They will dry a hard little bubble. And I have found this stuff, you know, it. I don't really, some people say there's a slight smell to the PC Petrifier. There is a tiny little smell. I don't find it at all. It does not bother me at all. The worst that happens is because I don't wear gloves or anything. I get a, a coating of product on my hands. And then the moment I start washing my hands a couple times afterwards, it does a, a peel off within 24 hours. Um, I have found it not to be toxic because I have a five pound chihuahua who has been known to eat mommy's beads from beginning to end. Do I encourage her eating beads? No. See, we got bubbles, right? We got bubbles right there. Now, there's a product that somebody is selling out there. 
and you have to pop her product too. So I don't buy her product because I think her product is, um, honestly, I think her product is PC Petrifier. And then I don't know what her glaze is that she's using because a friend of mine bought the, the product and we, we did some comparisons of taste. We did some, I was going to say taste tests. <laughs> we did some comparisons on paper and stuff and we could not find the difference between her product that she claims to dip it in to harden it to, um, um, we couldn't find a difference. I mean, color wise, it looks like PC Petrifier. You put it on certain types of paper. It comes out filling the exact same way. And then I did some Googling and found out that you can legally buy a product. As long as you don't repackage it and call it the same thing it is, you can actually buy a product and you can actually repackage it in your own bottles and call it whatever you want. Did not know that until I did some research. So, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to bad mouth that person. I'm not on her Facebook. I'm not on her bead page. I don't want to be on her bead page. She gets a lot of her beads when she tries to have a, a internet party. She gets some of her beads from overseas. And I don't, I don't support that overseas stuff because I don't think those people who make these paper beads over in whatever country it is, um, I don't think those women get the amount of money that everybody thinks they get. I think they get paid very little for all their work. And those, I watched the videos of those um, African women who make their beads. I mean, they get their hands right into it. They roll them by hands with their fingers, which has got to be crippling on the hands. And I don't think they get paid what they should get paid for their beads. I think it's a, an American taking advantage of those women, but I don't know the, all the logistics. That's just my idea about it all. I mean, Disney has even capitalized on that because you go to one of Disney's theme parks and they sell their beads claiming they're from whatever country claiming the beads are, are um, from them helping them in I don't see where Disney really does anything to help anybody. Disney's all about the money. And they charge them for a little bit of money. So, um, if I was going to buy any beads from anybody, I'd buy them from a, someone in the U.S. Then you're just paying shipping. And you know you're you're uh, helping out another fellow crafter in, in, in the States. So... But that's what I do. That's my bead, y'all. I'm, I'm going to stop before I ramble some more about stuff I don't know nothing about. I don't know nothing about that, so I shouldn't ramble about it. It's just what I think. So, but that's how I dip my paper beads. These are all waiting to be dipped. And, uh, I mean, I go through PC Petrifier like it's nothing. I mean, I just made that gallon of glaze, um, um, and I've hardly, I mean, I go through it quick. I can go through a gallon of PC Petrifier because I do so much dipping. I can go through a gallon of PC Petrifier in no time. Um, cause like I said, I used to keep my PC Petrifier in here and after dipping one, and this is one of those, um, storage containers after dipping one batch of beads, that thing would be almost gone. Because paper soaks up water. So I do go through a lot of PC Petrifier. It's actually, I'm about to order. I'm about to order another gallon of it. Because that was what was left in my last gallon. Plus um, these two little containers. Because I found out, if you don't use this stuff up. Because I had not been using these little containers I bought somewhere. Because I thought I'd take them for a class. Or if I was teaching a class, I'd take that with me so I could... You know, demonstrate or whatever. Uh-uh. Don't let the PC Petrifier sit around a long time. My mom had a bottle, and when I went through her craft stuff, I found her bottle. That stuff turns hard in the bottle, and it, you waste your product. I had to throw away two of those that the product had already solid, make, become solid inside, so use it. 
I mean, I've never had that happen because I've always used up my PC Petrifier really fast. I mean, if I'm dipping beads on a regular basis, I will go through a gallon of PC Petrifier in a, in a month or two. I dip a lot of beads. And I really like to make sure my beads soak it up. But like I said, I'm going to get off here because I'm rambling now. I'm rambling, rambling. All right. If you like what you see, like and subscribe. Um, And like I always say, enjoy the craziness of life because when you tell a friend about it, you might just laugh. I'm going to pause you guys for a second and show you my, my finished bead stash. Okay. Let me pause you. Okay. This is my finished bead stash. And it goes arm length in. So... I got beads all back up in there. Not a good light right here, but that's okay. But, yeah, that's my finished bead stash. I am going through it right now. Because I'm going to start selling it at uh, some events where I take my paper bead jewelry to. So, I've been sorting beads last night. And restringing them into 12-inch strands. Um, so, say if this was more than 12 inches. I would just save the bottom of this to make a bracelet or something for myself. But yeah, these are my beads. I got them hanging on those same hooks. Same hooks on the bottom of a shelf. So I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna figure out how to sell them on Etsy's. I think, I don't know. I think I'm gonna try to figure out a website this year. Because I want to uh, start selling some of my stuff. I mean, some of these beads have been made for, some of these beads are like six or seven years old. I mean, they, my beads do not turn yellow from what, from using the Verithane. They do not. And I've also used, um, oh, that uh, floor varnish. Um, I got a video back somewhere. Um, I've also used them on some of them and they, they have held up too. I mean, these were using that floor varnish that they used to varnish stuff with in the seventies. You get it at Walmart. Um, I can't remember what that stuff's called. Um, hold on here. Put you in pause a minute longer and I'll go see if I can find it. Okay, it's this stuff. Pledge, floor, care, finish, two times more shiny. I've dipped a few beads in that too. Um, how non-toxic is it? I don't know. But I've used that too. So, um, I've used that and there's my Verithane right there. That's the stuff I get from um, um, Lowe's, I think it is. You know, that's the stuff I use. I even use it to glaze, to my mixture PC Petrifier and the Verithane. I even used it to glaze my paper mache when I do my paper mache. Um, so, I have multiple use for that. So, yeah, this is a, I don't know what that is, but there's that floor cleaner in a container that I can glaze with. So that pledge stuff. I forget what the other stuff was called from the seventies, but they no longer make it, I guess. And that pledge was the closest thing to it. So, or maybe my research told me that that's what the, it's who makes it now. You know, the company turned into, uh, um, company now is owned by pledge. I don't know. I can't remember. I mean, I have, I have the Glarus Blanish, you know, but I don't use that stuff. I need to see if this bottle's turned bad. I need to go dump it and see if it has. But that's, that's my, that's, that's, that's it. All right. I'm going to say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Again, enjoy the craziness of life because you're going to probably laugh about it when you tell a friend. And like and subscribe my channel. I do all kinds of stuff. All right. See you later.